Welcome back to the Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next uh, conversation, of course, is going to insecurity. The leader of uh, Boko Haram, Abubakar Shekau, has been reportedly killed or seriously injured for the obtained time. This difference, uh, the difference rather this time is that the news isn't coming from the Nigerian military. Sources say he was killed during a battle between Boko Haram and its splinter group, ISWAP. But there is, of course, a twist to the story. He was uh, reported to have committed suicide before ISWAP could get to him. Now, of course, uh, there's been numerous reactions to this, mostly from Nigerians, and we're going to be getting uh, into a conversation with the former United States Marine, Captain Bish Johnson, uh, on the phone this morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us, Captain Johnson. Good morning. Good, mo good morning, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. So let's get into this. Um, for some people, it's exciting news. And for some others, it is scary. Because, um, you know, what does this mean, you know, for ISWAP? And, of course, does that mean that we now have a new, uh, um, you know, a terror group to be focused on? You know, so but from your experience, what would you interpret this as if Shekau truly has passed? Well, if in, if in fact that uh, Shekau is dead, um, I think that's some uh, some good news for Nigerian people, because so far Shekau seems to have been the most ruthless of every leader that uh, Boko Haram had, had ever produced. Now, however. We, we must approach this information with uh, caution, because as you are aware, this is not the first time it's been said that Shekau had been killed, only for him to resurface in some kind of audio or video to say that, look, he is still alive. Now, you made a point in your introduction that the difference this time around is because he didn't come from Nigerian military. Sure. But if you equally read the information that is being made available to the public, there's been a lot of inconsistencies. Some said he's dead. Some said he was fatally wounded. Some said that he committed suicide. So the information is neither here or there. But what is important is that, look, there seems to be some kind of disagreement between the two factions. And by the special grace of God, the two factions may eventually burn themselves out, reducing whatever effort that the Nigerian military will have to make to end this terror in the land. So it's good news that they are fighting among themselves. But we have to take the news of the death of Shakao with caution. Oh. Unless there is an undeniable, irrefutable evidence, such as the use of DNA, and the recovery of his body to confirm that he's actually dead. Well, um, I don't know how likely that would be, of course, since uh, the military has not been able to, you know, reach him all this while. Um, so, but let's, let's talk about the two factions now. What is it likely that might be causing a rift between these two factions from your experience and years in, on, on, in the battlefield? What is the likely um, reason between these um, infractions, um, or rather causing these infractions, and uh, at the same time, don't they have the same ideology or the same goal? Well, they do have the same goal of trying to cover a territory for themselves within that northeast Chad Niger area. But the difference is that their modus operandi is different. The Boko Haram people seem to be more ruthless in targeting everybody, including their fellow Muslims. Uh, while Aswab is not interested in killing their fellow Muslims, their targets are Nigerian institutions and, you know, Christians. So that seems to be where they disagree. And that is one of the reasons why you see the infighting between them. Another thing is they are fighting for supremacy and recognition, who will be more recognized and who will be more um, noticed uh, by by the public so that is what they are fighting about they're fighting for supremacy and they are also um they also have differences in their modus operandi um captain john bish um i need to ask you about this reported death of abubakar shikau 
From as far back as 2009, the Nigerian army published reports that they had killed him, and then he resurfaced a year later. And we know about how they would keep saying he's dead, and he's back again, he's dead, and he's back again. Even for this particular report, it's conflicting. One source says he blew himself up with a suicide vest. Another said he shot himself to the chest. Others said, you know, he actually isn't dead, but he sustained injuries. Is it possible, or find first of all, before the possibility of, you know, uh, you know what I was about to ask you, why is it so that, you know, killing or capturing Abubakar Shekau has been such a tough job for the Nigerian army? And also, for the death, for the news of his reported death, is, is, that, is it that the army, you know, wasn't being straightforward with the Nigerian people? No, that is it's not the intention of the Nigerian military not to be straightforward with the Nigerian people. Um, the problem we have in Nigeria is we are limited in terms of capacity um, to verify people's identity, whether alive or dead. Nigerians ordinarily, they don't have any kind of DNA data bank. And even if they kill Shekau and recover his body, because there is not a, death, a DNA data bank to compare a DNA sample that would have been on record with the DNA extracted from the dead body, it's difficult for you to just make a pronouncement that somebody is dead. The Nigerian military has always claimed that, look, this man has been dead long while ago, that the person who has been appearing, uh, saying that his, his Abubakar Shekau is a lookalike. It's possible that they're doing something like that. Since we don't have any technological, irrefutable evidence to say that, look, we have authoritatively killed this person. Oh, okay. You saw what happened when, when uh, Bin Laden was killed. You saw what happened when Abda, Abda Gari was killed. Uh, you saw what happened when the leader of the, the terrorist group in uh, Somalia you know, I've, I've forgotten his name, the Ashabab leader. Anytime the U.S. kills someone, they don't make it public until they have compared the DNA sample they have on record with the DNA sample from the body of the, the deceased. And they make sure that they, they retrieve the body of the deceased so that they can make extract the DNA and make comparison with what they have on file for that individual. In that instance, we are limited in our capacity here in Nigeria. I tell you how, uh, how Abagdadi's DNA sample was obtained. The, one of his closest aides brought his underwear to the United States military. From there, they extracted his DNA and put it on file. So when he was eventually killed, they had a record on file to make comparison from the one they extracted from his body. And so that was how they could authoritatively say, look, we have killed this person. And when you have that kind of evidence, it's difficult for that organization to come back and refute that kind of information. But okay. that is not the case in Nigeria, and that is why we have these kind of confusions everywhere. All right. So, Captain Johnson, beyond, you know, all the high-tech stuff for the DNA, is it that the Nigerian army does not know what Abubakar Shekau looks like for us to keep having these reports of his death and resurrection? Well, if you see somebody today and you don't see him for a while, and for somebody who is in hiding and is under, constantly under attack and is always changing his location, disguising himself, the memory of the person you're going to have is as at the last time you saw that individual. So, sorry, just a so minute. It, is it that the Nigerian army is relying on memory? Don't they have photographs of him? Don't they have people who should be able to take high-level photographs, you know, um, satellite images to track somebody, facial recognition, things like that? Is the Nigerian army relying on memory to find Abubakar Shakar? That is what I was trying to allude to earlier when I said that we are limited in capacity. Hmm. We are limited in capacity in Nigerian military. And so... To that extent, uh, there's not much they can do. And somehow they have not been able to penetrate the group uh, through informants uh, who could have been updating them with, you know, updates as far as like how the individual looks or their whereabouts and stuff like that. I was just going to so ask. It's, it's, uh, it's a much difficult job for them. 
I was just going to ask, you know, about that now, you know, why we haven't been able to achieve that level of infiltration um, into the Boko Haram uh, sect over 10 years. It should be enough time for us to have been able to um, develop some level of infiltration um, into the sect. Um, but aside that, um, you know, you've mentioned, you know, that uh, ISWAP and Boko Haram might have similar ideologies, but maybe just different methods, um, you know, somehow, some way. Um, if it is true that Shekau is dead, does that in any way say that the Boko Haram sect might be um, diminishing bit by bit? And should that, you know, put fear in us that ISWAP, um, you know, and their emergence as a new superpower, uh, super terror power in, in Nigeria, might be, uh, come more ruthless seeing their relationship with ISIS? Look, let's not uh, uh, get over our head that uh, Abubakar Shekau is dead. One thing I have learned about this terrorist organization is that they have grown beyond individuals. Although Abubakar Shekau was a very strong man of Boko Haram, he's dead. No question. We deal a, a blow to Boko Haram. But it will only be a matter of time before they will appoint a new leader. That leader may end up being more ruthless than Abubakar Shekau himself and they will regroup and reorganize themselves, and they will continue their terror of death and destruction. So let's not just get over our heads. We have to watch and see how much the impact of death of Abu Bakr Shekau will cause to um, Boko Haram. As far as Aswab is concerned, Aswab has the same ideology as Boko Haram, and it's reflected in their name, Islamic State of West African Province. They want to create a state for themselves. And they, they will continue to fight to achieve that objective. So the onus is on us as a nation, as a state, to thwart that objective and prevent them from achieving it. So how do you think this news might impact, you know, the, the insecurity levels in the country? I, I don't think it will even, I don't think it will have any impact on the insecurity in the country. Because the insecurity in the country, you know, it has, has been broadened far beyond Boko Haram and ISWAP in northeast Nigeria. It used to be that the insecurity we had in this country was localized in that region. But as you know, and as I know, there is insecurity everywhere in the country right now. You have bandits, you have arsonists, you have armed robbers, you have kidnappers, you have abductors. It's all kinds of insecurity all over the country. You have the, the Janjaweed militia killer headsmen who are equally ravaging the entire country. So the, the death of Abu Bakr Shekau is by no means going to have any impact in the reduction of insecurity that we have in this country right now. All right. Well, sadly, well, we, of course, would have to wait until there's some level of confirmation of his death uh, since uh, nobody has any insiders and Boko Haram or ISWAP, and uh, we've also not been able to infiltrate. So we'll wait and see how this turns out. Thank you very much, Captain Bish Johnson, for your time and for speaking with us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. All right, thanks again. So we'll turn our focus now, you know, from insecurity and politics to actually politics of some other kind, which is politics in sports. Do stay with us.